I want to thank our sponsors who help each week put out the content for these podcasts as we invite different people from throughout the community to tell their story. So sincerely, Soul Source Restoration. Check them out, soulsourcerestoration.com. If you ever have an issue with water damage, mold, fire damage, they're there to help. It's a local Cranston company that's supporting not only this podcast, but people every day throughout the community. Check them out. Thank you for our sponsor. I want to welcome everyone back to another episode here at the Historic Park Theater and Event Center Park Podcast, and we're with three guys that are making a lot of traction in film and television right here in Rhode Island and beyond, working with some incredible talent, producer Paul Luba, childhood friend, director, producer, very, very proud of you, man, Tommy Danucci Thank you, Billy. and uh, Chad Brody Jr. Thanks. So we, we got a great project that we're, uh, it came out today, right? Yeah, literally, literally today, Friday, February 13th. Hopefully it's lucky for us and not unluckily, uh, like most people get on Friday. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, of um, course, I'm like, oh, Friday the 13th, yeah, let's right. put a movie out. Um, <laughs> but an yeah. incredible story. I, I watched the trailer, uh, my father, Muhammad Ali. Yeah, so we, uh, my, my father, Muhammad Ali, out today, uh, written and directed by, or I guess not written, but directed by uh, Tom Danucci and my father, Chad Verdi. Uh, most of it filmed right here in Rhode Island, did a lot of the interviews, brought Ali here to Rhode Island, him and his brother, uh, Richard. Um, and they, uh, they came here, had a lot of fun, got to kind of know their story. And then we kind of followed them on the road for a few weeks, learned about what they do, and uh, obviously brought in a lot of his family members for the interview, uh, just to kind of get a background on him and his struggle of growing up in the shadow of the world's arguably most famous and uh, greatest boxer of all time, Muhammad Ali. Sure. And uh, this film's been like a long time in the making. We started yeah. filming it in August 2020, you know, a uh, small crew. And um, it took, it, we shot for on and off a year, a year and a half. And then for all of like the posts as well, um, you know, the whole project took over two years to complete and be able, all of it released out there. So, sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, out there. I mean, it must be difficult. Filmmaking is difficult in itself, right? Sure. Producing a film, getting the finance, and getting to the finish line, and everything in between. And obviously, producers, that's, that's the creator there to keep him in track, keep budgets in line. Sure. But yeah. now you throw in COVID, and you throw yeah. in a pandemic, and you throw in all the rules that came within that. How hard was that, getting to the finish line on some of these projects, not only this well, one? Well, it's kind of funny. You know, if you watch the film, you'll notice there are actually some of the interviews where we have our... Dr. Monica O'Neill, who is basically doing an impromptu therapy session with Muhammad. And you'll notice we photograph it at split screen. Mm -hmm. And we had to do that because at the time we're right in the middle of COVID and we had to have everybody 15, feet apart, 20 yeah. feet apart. And we you know, had one setup over here, we had one lighting setup over for her, one camera setup for him, back and forth. So COVID was definitely playing its hand. Um, but also in a weird way, I think that added to just the ultimate like feeling of kind of desperation to the movie you know this movie has that kind of feeling of like uh, we're kind of uh, in uh, treading on some uncomfortable waters so sure. i think in a weird way covid like was part of the theme and a you know an undertone to the film totally mm -hmm. just like it, being in a state of unknown yeah, yeah. It kind of, it's kind of mimics ali's life in a sense where it's like we're COVID hits we shut down there's no movies being made there's limited content online and we're trying to figure out a way to get back into the swing of things. And it's kind of, we're picking up where Ali is also picking up, where he's trying to start and reinventing himself in his life. So it was kind of us coming together, letting him get his story out there, and us trying to navigate the new seas of what COVID is bringing to us. Sure. So. And not to like make this a whole COVID thing, but I've noticed that like a lot's changed in post-production now, where like I'm doing more and more editing sessions via Zoom. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, like I'm working with people in LA, like we did a film called Johnny and Clyde, which I know we're gonna talk about that later. We did a lot of color sessions and editing sessions from LA, you know, and I'm yep. just, the only difference is I gotta get up a little earlier or go to bed a little later. So we know <laughs> the negative effects, but that could be a positive effect yeah, of the exactly. future of yeah. Let's practice. say you wanna work yeah. with some great talent, but you can't get there because of a family reason or whatever. It's like, hey, we can hop on Zoom and have a session, so. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and let's streamline things a lot too, right? So it's like, instead of having to fly out to LA and spend three days flying there, settling in, getting to know someone, whatever, you can kind of just jump on a Zoom call, spend 45 minutes with someone and kind of cut out all that in between of the sure. travel and the money. I know too. this sounds so like, you know, we're turning into the society of cold people, but like really once you get into the swing of it, like I didn't notice much of a difference 
from like yeah. not being in the room with the person. Sure, you know, because sure. you still make cracking jokes and you can still hear them. And mm -hmm. yeah, so it, it's pretty seamless. Yeah, that's good to hear. Yeah, yeah. So and, all, yeah, I mean, I was going to say all that started in you know 2020, 2021, and now it's like more accepted in the film industry too. And now like yeah. people yeah. see that more as kind of like the norm. And so, these guys know, and all my yeah. friends know, I'm kind of agoraphobic <laughs> a little bit. Like, I don't really leave my house much. Yeah. So that, that used to be weird. And now it's like, cool. oh, yeah, we're going to do a Zoom right. session. Yeah. And yeah. everyone's yeah. like, yes, nobody. <laughs> I can wear sweatpants. Sure, or no sure. pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I remember, you know, vividly, we graduated high school this, the same year, and, and, and you were doing film projects back then, even just those projects with your friends. And to see you evolve and get to this point in your career where you're, you're doing massive projects, right? Uh, you know, I said it as our intro, but I am incredibly proud of you, but oh, I know man, it hasn't been you. easy to get there, right? W what kind of struggles and trials and tribulations did you have to navigate really to get well, to this well, point? Well, first of off, Ed, thank you so much for saying that. That means a lot, I'm, and I'm, I'm so equally proud of all the amazing things that you've done Thanks, in man. your career to just like, you know, the entrepreneurialship is just something to be admired. Um, but a lot of know, highs and lows in that too. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you know, you'll know what I'm talking about when I say. I think the biggest thing that I could say to anybody out there who's trying to get into any career path that's not the norm sure. is there's going to be two things that are going to happen. Most people are going to think you're crazy, and it's not going to happen, and that's okay. Don't be discouraged by that. Yeah. But the bigger thing is to really make it happen. You got to understand that it's always going to take longer than you think it's going to take. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, like I remember thinking that, like, I'll do this for a couple of years. We'll make a couple of movies. It'll be great. And it's like, no, this is the, you know, it's like that, you know, the the, uh, it's it's just one of those things where to master something takes so many years. Sure. So just my big thing would be just don't get discouraged because it takes a long time. Yeah. Um, and you just got to keep working at it, you know. And, and a lot of it's luck too. Being in the right place at the right time with the right person. Being you know? the right team. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. How, did, how did you all come together? Well, so Tommy works worked with my father. Yep. Um, and so I Who's had an incredible career. Yeah. So he he uh, he started off in film, wanting to make Bleed for This, which is his passion project, the Vinnie Pazienza story. Yeah. Uh, native Rhode Islander, five-time world champion boxer. Um, and he was fascinated by that story. And when he first wanted to make that film, he quickly learned that you can't just make a good movie. You gotta figure out, you gotta learn, you gotta meet people, you gotta really invest your time into it to make a quality movie. Um, and that's kind of when Tommy was introduced to him at an early stage during Incubus, right? You were acting in that. Um, yeah. And and before that, right? Which film right at the yeah, Prince even little, station, yeah, the yeah they took it station. over for a few weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah which is pretty cool. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, I mean, outside of the Farley brothers, I think my father was one of the first native Rhode Islanders to do something actually here in Rhode Island. Uh, and obviously, there's big productions coming here now with HBO's Gilded Age and Hocus Pocus from Disney and stuff and like that. Maybe they wouldn't have if it wasn't for those early Potentially. days. Potentially. Right. I mean, Creation. I think it helped uh, keep the tax credit alive here in Rhode Island. And growing. Right. Yeah, exactly. I yeah. mean, like yep. back then, 2010, there was no infrastructure. Or there was very a very small infrastructure for film. And yep. Chad's father, Chad Sr., helped uh, create that for future films after that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. it's definitely, uh, the movie business is a lot like... Uh, a little bit of a getting to know the industry process. Yeah. And it, it's not always fun in the beginning and sure. you have to do a lot of kind of thankless tasks. And yeah. you know, that's kind of how Paul got involved. You know, like Paul started off as an intern. Yeah. You know, Chad started off as an intern. I made it, my first movie, Self Storage, Chad was like a PA on the movie. Full time, yeah. that was my so first full, full time gig. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And yep. he was, you know, doing all the things that, you know, a lot of people might think like, oh, your dad runs the movie company. It's like, nope, you're a PA and sure. you're gonna go yeah. run the garbage with everybody yeah, else. Yeah, exactly. And, He's, I love he's it, done. Yeah. Yeah, 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 he's done great. all of the most, like, you know, and when I say thankless, I don't mean that, like, they're not necessary. These are sure. incredibly necessary jobs, but he's done all the thankless jobs. Yeah, sure. Um, and if you had, had it, you wouldn't be able to lead, right? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Same yeah. thing in the yeah, restaurant no, industry. Right. right, exactly. I have to know every single aspect a little if you've bit. you never taken yeah. out yeah, the You don't trash, have to be expert, yeah. yeah. You don't know. Yeah. So, yeah. Exactly. Um, and you got to know what it feels like to take direction properly and then also be able to give direction. like yeah give direction so it's like oh you told me how to do this i didn't feel good about it or maybe i thought you should have done yeah exactly you know and then you have to direct someone differently i can say this because i know you're a sports fan i know you like all kind of different sports it's like coaching like different players respond to different styles of coaching some players want to be hammered on yeah yell yeah give it to me you know and some hey get a hands off with that one you know let them figure it out themselves so that's kind of it. Like, you know, I, I was never a great athlete, but I played a lot of team sports growing yeah. up. So, like, I feel like there is a little connection to, like, 
playing sports, athletics, like how do you handle each person a little differently to make the right team? Sure, yeah. of course. And, uh, you know, I'd say starting out, you know, you have to really want it, you know, and yeah. especially Rhode Island's not known as a huge film state, but we still have like a lot going on here. But uh, you just have to be able to work the long hours. You know, all of us started out like on like the bottom, you know, we started all out as interns. We were able to work our way up. And that was just because of being able to willingly do like just about anything for like the film and for like the production and stuff and just like, you know, being hard workers you gotta love what you do every day right yeah right? exactly the, the, so. the bad the good the, yeah. the, the, the but it, you know it does get discouraging when like this is some of the sadder parts what you have to get through mm. like i remember being in my young 20s and seeing a lot of my peers like making big people money yeah, yeah. like making oh, adult yeah, money yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah like hey even like oh that guy's making like 50 60 grand a year or that's good pretty good money like oh tommy you're still playing around and with like that I, video camera yeah, yeah, right. like, yeah. yeah i got that i, mean, I was I, taking you know, pictures in nightclubs there were sure, some lean yeah. years there brother yeah, yeah of course and you're like oh, man all these guys are they're, they're like making Am a I nice on the right living path? right and yeah. like how come i'm you know i got two nickels to rub together yeah but you know if you keep going you can definitely get past that period sure it's just it, in the early days it could be discouraging to see yeah. the, the the person with the 40 hour standard 40 hour a week i did what i was supposed to do sure and they got all this money they mm -hmm. got the new car they yeah. got their own place they got this they got that i don't have that stuff sure what's wrong with me and it's like no you got to get past that part yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah of course keep resilience yeah and it's like i i often as a creator there's, there's, there's low points of being a creator, right? Like what you're talking about. And it's interesting, as you tell these stories, and you talk about therapists, and, and all of us in a post-COVID world kind of getting in our own head, even as men, oh, not course. always happen to be strong sure. and right. have expressive, express our own vulnerability on podcasts like this, like your own, that I'm continuing to watch. It's, oh, it's kind of bringing us all, oh, okay, we're all a little bit effed up, right? Of course. But if we can keep talking about it and creating together and building the right teams, yeah. then... What was uh, the last production that you did for Vault? Was that a $5 million production? I mean, could uh, the childhood versions of yourself, could you ever vision? Doing a movie like that. Manifesting, yeah. getting to that yeah. point. Yeah, right? it's exactly what, you know, it's what I always wanted, you know? Yeah. So it is really, it's nice to see a little bit of a payoff happen, but there's so much more still to be done, Ed. Of course, of co a lot of stories there's to be still told. still so much time to be yeah. done, brother. I'm, I'm with you, man. I think, <laughs> you know? Uh, I know your ambition, and, and it's very similar <clears> to mine, uh, even, in times like the last few years bringing us down and i want to go to the moon right i want to see this film credit not be capped and, right. and just be able yeah. to continue to bring production into Rhode Island. i yeah. know the positive benefits i want to continue to increase opportunities to see local Rhode Islanders wanting to study film and television or mm -hmm. even hospitality again or, or bring back the art of cooking right because yeah. it was kind of the death of the chef during COVID, it was a lot of people transitioned to, right. to yeah. other jobs. And, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Amazon drivers or whatever it may be. But if we lose the passion for anything, mm -hmm. then how do we figure out a way to kind of bring it back? In Rhode Island, as you guys know, because you keep choosing to shoot here, we have so many beautiful assets to showcase, whether oh, it's our culinary yeah. scene or Newport or, or the beauty of our capital city, yep. which I know you guys have highlighted. And, and the economic developments that that brings from tourism, just from people seeing it, I'm sure you can speak on the beaches. people that didn't even yeah. know about. Oh, that that Rhode Island's a state. I mean, that's yeah, I thought that was New York. Right? And, <laughs> right. Rhode Island is like surprisingly diverse, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's so small, but yet you have the beautiful beaches, you have the city, and then if you go west, you have Coventry, the middle of the woods. You have some hills, you have valleys. You know, sure. there's like it's very diverse for what it is. And so you like as a creative person, you can create so many different landscapes with what you have here, yeah. and, and we're able to paint so many different stories. You know, we've been able to fake Ro uh, Rhode Island for all kinds of other states. I sure. know on one of uh, Chad's father's first movie, uh, Lucy's, which um, you were involved with, Tom. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, My first time playing they, a detective. Right. There you go. Um, yeah. It was shot mostly. <laughs> now you're a detective. Yeah, like, it's, like, it's full yeah. circle. Back on the job. <laughs> yeah. But it was shot it's mostly in Rhode Island, yeah. but uh, the film was set in New York, New York. City. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like, yeah, we were looking yeah. right down Westminster Street, <laughs> yeah. and it was like, no, that's Fifth Avenue. <laughs> yeah. 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 What are you talking about? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, it's just like it's between cool. that, you know, we have the city, we have all of like the beaches, we have the fields. It really, you know, we have a lot to work with here, you know, yeah. and obviously uh, the film uh, credit provided by the state helps a lot. And that helps yeah. us uh, keep shooting as many uh, films as we shoot every year. Yeah, so. definitely yeah. special thanks to Steve Feinberg mm -hmm. and Carol Conley over at the film office. Yeah, they're advocates. They're, yeah, yeah. Steve's they're amazing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're amazing. Also a Cranston West guy. 
Francis West yeah. guy, big UFC fan. Yeah, I watched yeah. many of fights with Steve. There you go. Uh, yeah, I remember being it. with you. We, we were fortunate enough to be invited as alumni to speak with Steve at Cranston West. Oh, yeah, West. that's right. That and was I remember fun. We were like, wow, this place needs an upgrade. Right? <laughs> yeah, but then it, you went and upgraded it. <laughs> but, yeah, well, that's you awesome, with, I appreciate, you know, spreading the word. But, yeah, two years later, we have a brand new. Yeah, that was, it was looking nasty in there. It was looking like, rough. Like, the seats yeah. were, like, falling really? apart. Really? Yeah, wow. Brown seats. No and, way. You know, yeah, it was yeah. not good. But good for you guys. That's awesome. But, you know, yeah, Ambition, really I, know cool. you're, I know you're also a collector of memorabilia of and various things. Yeah. And I feel like Ambition and collectors kind of go hand in hand. Because sure. I don't know if you're like this. And I know you're like this. We've I think I have a good collection. I watch yours. I'm like, well, but you. I know jealousy and envy. He's not oh, come on. I'm like, damn, he's, I want that piece. Right? But, yeah. but no, really, like, do you know, does this happen to you? You get a nice piece that you've been wanting for a while. You get it. You like it. You look at it for a day or two. And what's the next thing you're thinking? What's next? Yeah. Like, what yeah. what yeah. do I want? What's yeah. the next yeah. big thing? I, I know. Yeah. Seriously, yeah. dude. So it's like, that's the same. Like, the, I have that part of my brain functions with my work. You sure. know what I mean? Like, it's very difficult to be satisfied. But very satisfied with my father, Muhammad Ali. I can't wait yeah. for people to see it. Um, do you have a Muhammad Ali piece? You know, it's funny you mention that. I don't really have a really nice piece. I'm, so what's I'm next? To, right? I'm trying to get an autograph. <laughs> yeah. I have been trying to get yeah. a nice autograph of yeah. his. But, uh, but yeah, uh, we're also really excited about Johnny and Clyde, and I know you got a chance to yeah, I visit appreciate, set that day. I appreciate the invitation. It was yeah, awesome. That was that was a good Ed day was to there too, yeah. one of the days that we did. You know, Megan Fox was there, and we did a lot of... Uh, just kind of great problems, character yeah. work. Yeah, with, with and watching Megan. you direct Megan Fox. I mean, it was it was cool to watch her take your direction. Well, I appreciate it. Right, you know, Mecca talent right here, right here in Rhode Island. Yeah. Obviously, a film that you guys yeah. are producing. Even watching you kind of navigate. We know that sets just like this, production. Yeah. There's always something that doesn't go according to of plan. Of course but not. How You're you handle it. Fire, how yeah. you pivot. Yeah. How you solution. How you find. Another solution, another solution, another yeah. solution. It does take well, a team, it, yeah. and that was that was that was magic. I can't I wait. It's coming out that, in the yeah, next dude. couple months. That will yeah, be coming out in March, right? Yeah. yeah, late March, somewhere around there, early spring this year. And so, yeah. and Johnny and Clyde was our first big film back from, from COVID, like, yeah. 2020, and like the pandemic, we shot it in the fall of 2021. Yeah. In in that span, we had been shooting a lot of smaller films. Yeah. But that was our first like big film back yep. in like a really long time. So we were really excited about that one. Had an all-star cast. Yep. Uh, Bailing, Vanessa Angel, a Avon. Sean Ringgold. Avon Jogia. Avon Jogia. Yep. Uh, a Johnny Russell, uh, Sean Ringgold. Um, just like a whole all-star cast for it. So, yep. yeah. It's March, is that Target? Yes. I know you're not yes, supposed to yes, always, yeah, so, always so, a moving target. Well, it's been, I think it's public knowledge, the distributor, right? Yes, so it was yeah. purchased by Redbox, who awesome. just was acquired by another distribution company called Chicken Soup for the Soul. And so during their transition, this movie was supposed to come out probably six months ago. But since they were Redbox was being acquired, it kind of slowed down the release of our film. Mm -hmm. And yeah. now it's been slated for early 2023 uh, with a target date of around late March. Uh, so that's what we're hoping for. Uh, we're still kind of waiting to figure out exactly when it'll be released. So, so yeah. So uh, Johnny and Clyde is now a chicken soup, uh, a chicken soup for the soul entertainment yes. production, which is yeah. kind of funny. Which do you remember the books? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, I was thinking that. I, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. It's yeah. the yeah. same yeah. company. Right? Yeah. yeah, and it's, it's pretty wild. It's just yeah. kind of funny because Johnny Think and Clyde. Like, media changes over right. time. Yeah. Yeah. So you go from books to. Now they pivoted. They evolved. Sure. You know? Yeah. 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 You know, Johnny and Clyde's a uh, dark um, comedy that has blood and serial killers and all that. So it's shout kind of, out to yeah, uh, like, Rhode Islander Nick Principe who co-wrote yeah. the script. Yeah, with me. absolutely. Yeah. Um, another uh, bit of a wild mind that he has. Uh, How long is that, that process, Tommy? About writing? You know, it changes on a lot of different projects I've been on. Sometimes you're under the gun, and it's like, hey, we need the script in three weeks. Like yeah. I've been in those situations, but. If I had my druthers and it was like, Tommy, here, how much time do you want? Yeah. Which never happens. Mm -hmm. Probably Won't like, <laughs> you know, four to six months, I'd say. Yeah. yeah. Like if you gave me like six months, it'd be great. Four months, yeah. we'd probably have some notes to talk about. And how about. many rewrites usually in that? It, it depends. Again, it's all different. But like, uh, you know, one of the projects we're working on right now, uh, like for example, Vault had about three rewrites. Yeah. You know, we sent the movie out. The Vault originally had a voiceover in it. Because, you know, me and B. Dolan love Goodfellas and we love Casino. Sure, and those sure. are voiceover driven gangster movies yeah. that yeah. we were trying to emulate because we love, we love those guys. I love sure. Martin Scorsese. He, to me, he's the goat. Absolutely. Um, so basically, uh, they were like, yeah, 
pull the voice over, get that thing out of there. And yeah. we're like, that's the whole movie. Yeah. We can't find another way to tell it. It's a big pivot. So it's yeah. like, okay. <laughs> yeah, you'll so, rewrite almost the whole thing. Yeah. yeah, so I've had big ones, and then we've had ones where it's just like, hey, change this one character. That might be a little too violent, and that's it. So you just never know, and you just that's kind of fun potluck of, you know, like we're, we're, Chad talked about, we're making this into a feature. I'm finishing the feature draft of it, and the next step will be a big old round of notes. Awesome. And then we'll see what I got to do to get it to where it's got to go. And how hard is that process as co-producers of a film? Sure. To take an idea from creation, from pen to paper, to actually... Producing it yeah, and putting it, it all together. Well, you know, and it varies project yeah. to project. Sure. Uh, so on something like this, it's going to takes a lot of time. We've been working on, obviously, the documentary for two years now, almost three years, it feels yeah. like. Um, and then to turn it into a biopic is going to... We've been... How long have you been writing the script now? Like... Probably like six months. Yeah, about six yeah. months. And Perfect so, timing. Yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> and, and it's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. And as a, a producer, you're anxious. You're like, give me the script. Let's go. Sure. And I want to make this tomorrow. You can't force you. No, you can't. Yeah. You can't. And you, we well, really we want to massage sure this that, one out. Like, yeah. uh, one of the big things that we do, a lot of people say, like, you know, like, we try to mitigate our risk. Yeah. So when we'll send this script out for what's called coverage, yep. which is basically you send it to a big agency, yep. and the agency will read it, and they'll be like, all right, we'll grade it, basically. we think this needs to change, and this needs to change. And, and it's, it's kind of like hedging your bet, because those are eventually going to be the people that go out and either rep the movie, or sure. try to put the word out, whatever it may be. Or cast the film. Or too. cast the yeah. movie. So it's like, we're fortunate enough, and, and I'm very lucky to get, be getting notes, like as they st say, straight from the horse's mouth. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, these are the people that are literally going to be working on this thing. Yeah. So it's not like some random person's telling me, like, why do you think you should change this? Because mm -hmm. I yeah. think so. It's my opinion. Sure, it's sure. like, no, these are literally experts that Professionals, yeah. you know, yeah. do yeah. this. So, There's a vulnerability yeah. of that process, though, like putting... you got to have really thick skin. Yeah. I remember being on an audition with you really early on in the process for Brotherhood. I'm not sure if you recall. Oh, yeah, of course we I do. We both made it to that final stage where we were doing the screen we got a call with, back. The, with the actual actors. Yeah. Right? And... Uh, yeah, I mean, one person might love you, might love me, but it's like ultimately you have to have that thick skin to keep going, look at yourself in the mirror the next day and be like, no, you got this to get to the point of your career where you... And just know that it's not it. personal. You sure. know what I mean? Like, yeah. It's not like they Neither hate Neither one you. of us got the part, right? So, no, we didn't get <laughs> the part. I think it was a friend of the actor. No, I think right? both of us were upset because we saw a guy get walked into the room with one of the yeah. actors. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. He's getting an escort? Yeah. He's, oh, I he's was kind of upset because I, yeah. I, I knew my own... I think I thought it was just me and you up for it and I was like, oh, I'm no, not there were 20 people in the room. <laughs> yeah, right. That's yeah. how it always goes. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, fun yeah. times. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, you know. <laughs> as like getting rejected is great. Yeah, 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 <laughs> great. But it's a big... It drives yeah, me, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was going to say yeah. it's a big... We prove ourselves right. It's yeah. a big yeah. thing yeah. in, like, the film industry. You know, you're going to get a lot of rejections. You're going to get a lot of no's. And then it's all about just uh, being able to power through those. And sure. Then you'll start to get some yeses, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Again, it comes back yeah, to right. yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. it comes back to being at the right place at the right time in no. front of the right people. Yeah. You know, ten people might say no to your idea, and then it takes one person to say yes. And, and, and to have a, a magnitude, like a, like a, a mass of ideas. Like I was recently told by an industry insider that, mm -hmm. like, I thought I was doing okay because I had submitted a few scripts last year, and I was banging around the industry through various agents and things yeah. like that. They're like, no, you need like forty scripts out there. Mm. Like, because even if 39 of them are no's, like, you just get that one yes. That's yeah. all you need. So, like, you need, it's like the shotgun method. Like, sure. fire a big blast out and see if yep. you hit something. And I imagine at that, you don't have six months to write 40 scripts. No. Right? So you have to find cold I need to get by with a little help from my friends. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. 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 And that's kind of it, too. It's kind of every like a, a lot of people will approach us and be like hey we have this great script and it's like uh, unfortunately we can't we don't have time to mm -hmm. read a sure. new script every single day it's not possible yeah. so what we do and what we look for are just simple long line log lines or a synopsis yeah. give me give me an elevator pitch tell me what your story is about if i find it interesting or if someone else finds it in interesting then you go write the script and do it yeah. um because it's just it, reading a full script, it's going to take a few hours every single day. Nobody has time for so it. So for those so watching, like, though, you would be pitched. You would if yeah. you want to see synopsis. Yeah, yeah. 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 Send, I mean, send if, if small were, things. If yeah. I were yeah. like yeah. to recommend to a young filmmaker to do anything because it's so easy now, like you literally like get your concept, write it, take your phone out, yeah. and go make the cheapest possible version of it just to have sure. a proof of concept. Concept. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like and show me that you really care. Yeah. That you're willing to yeah. like put skin in the game in the term in terms of time 
to like produce something sure. to show me because then you don't even have to read it yeah. it's like hey watch this 30 second clip this is my idea yeah sure. and then you're showing wow this person has a an awareness to tell a story with visuals yeah you know like that's something that's another nice way to approach it yep and you know you'll get the benefit of the doubt it doesn't have to be we know it's not paramount pictures you shot it yourself it's a sure. proof of concept you know yep. so yeah and you guys working on anything else currently or anything else you want yeah to you know we actually tommy's actually acting in a film we have going right now for a lifetime through the company mar vista uh, a couple of our producing partners david gear and chelsea vale uh, and Jacob Cooney, actually, all from Connecticut, so New Englanders, which is awesome. So yep. keeping it all local as possible. They have a great relationship with a film company called Mar Vista. And Mar Vista is a big studio. They don't do studio films, but they put out TV movies like nobody else. Yep. They do probably hundreds of them a year, I would say. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so our producer friends uh, have a couple scripts that they were brought to by Mar Vista came to us with them and they were like, hey, can you guys help us make these films? So we got a couple of Lifetime movies going on right now. Again, Tommy's acting in one, Paul I, and uh, producers. Yeah, I just directed a film called The Collective, yeah, which, which will be coming film. out yep. pretty soon, uh, which is by um, Yale Productions uh, and Richard Switzer produced the film and it stars Ruby Rose, Don Johnson. That's a great and, cast. Um, Tyrese Gibson and Lucas Till. And it's just, it's my first ever just straight up action movie. There's no romance. Mm. There's no like guns uh, blazing. There's just no like nothing to slow it down. It's just yeah. It's just a a, a race to the finish, and it's all action. Uh, so that was a lot of fun to make. And the big thing too is we talked about this a little bit before the show, but like I'm really trying to build up my YouTube channel. Yeah. I love creating content. There's sure. something about the immediacy of like, you know, when I make a movie, it's it's satisfying, but you don't get that satisfaction of someone watching your thing for like years. Like we've been talking about this Ali movie. We've been working on this for years. Yeah. Yeah. I go home, I make a stupid little cat video or action figure video. Someone's sure. watching it right then. Yep. People could see it, immediacy. Yeah. So like I love that. So I've just been yeah, creating cool. a lot of that and I've got a podcast now that I've been working on, so uh, Where can people if, check if you'd out? Like, yeah, if you'd like to check it out, just uh, punch Tom Danucci into your YouTube, Bingo. and uh, I'll pop up, and you can subscribe, and I'll be very thankful for that. That's what's up. Yeah, it must feel good, even just coaching with all the lessons that you guys learn at this point in the process on how others can emulate the mm -hmm. success. Yeah, that and that's kind of oh, what yeah. our focus has been, it's really more recently, but obviously throughout our entire as a, as a producer, what we try to do is always build other people up. But we put a real focus recently on taking Rhode Island film students, high school students, getting them to intern with us and learn the film industry at a young age and through college so they can kind of start working right out of college so yep. that they have, they're not green right, right out of college and they can come in and actually be of help on set. And um, I think it's been pretty beneficial. We're trying to really create Which a is good for the foundation. macro, right? 10 years yeah, from now, yeah, we exactly. look forward. Yeah. And hopefully there's... Yeah, there's never going to be a shortage. Yeah, right. We're not having to outsource from. Yeah, yeah exactly. States, right? I'll, I'll say this on our set right now, I'd say uh, 40 to 50 percent of the crew members started out with us either as interns yeah. or their first uh, film ever was, was with us. Was, yeah. uh, with us. So we really like to see people um, grow, grow as we grow, you know, and That's we're right. now doing like, you know, around six feature films a year in Rhode uh, Island. Right. In right Rhode, here in Rhode Island. In like, Incredible. In Rhode Island, some on the smaller scale, some on like a big scale. But, uh, you know, we try to keep people who are interested in film in Rhode Island as busy as humanly possible. Yeah. So, yeah. It's all about creating a foundation. And that's what you're trying to do, too. You of know? course. And I know you're, you're building a Thirsty Beaver, actually, right near my house in East Greenwich. North which Kingston. is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Into the yeah. You're going to have your own booth. <laughs> uh, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, very, yeah, right. <laughs> we're, we're excited for that one. I mean, to, to build our first one in, here in our hometown in yeah. Madison. And, to be at a fifth, it's it's kind of surreal. Uh, Dude, it's awesome. A lot and more expensive than the first one. Yeah, the oh, Beaver's sure. a landmark, man. That's something to be really proud of. Thanks, you know? man. I, mean, I appreciate uh, it. I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know a Cranstonian who hasn't had a Beaver experience right. and doesn't know. It's kind of like synonymous, becoming synonymous with I Cranston. It. And I know it's beyond yeah. Cranston, mm -hmm. obviously, but that was where the first one was. Yeah, right? first one was here. So that's the flat. That'll always be like the flagship in your yeah, heart, I mean, I'm sure. My partner, I, I remember. I remember how tough it was to get that first one done yeah. at 160 yeah. grand, yeah. and now we're at a larger, larger part yeah. of the process. It looks great, by the way. Thank the you building, so much. Dude, I just, you brought cranes in. I almost took a picture of them and sent it to you. And we're like, keep building Rhode Island up, man. <laughs> yeah. like, it's, here's cool. the thing, it's cool, Ed, You just said a mouthful because it's the same thing with, with movies. A lot of people sure. say this to me. It's like, 
make that first one, the second one's a lot easier. The yeah. third one's even easier, the fourth yeah. one. But that first one is like, you think you're going to die. Got to get started. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. But yeah. if you yeah. can just get that first one made, yeah. right. everything else gets a little bit easier. Sure. You know? And so, like, yep. even on a smaller scale, just like being on that first set. You know, being on that, Getting that experience as yeah. an intern or a PA or anything and just making those You just learn so, so like much. Guarantee yep. you the next job and the next yep. job and the next job and like the next set too. So, and, and again, I think it's getting on set and probably similar making the first beaver. You're, you fail so much, and, but it's all a learning process. You're, it's when like you're a failing, brand new. Though, it's like it feels like you're, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, yeah. But then after you're like, dying, oh, you're like, oh, my that. God. Yeah, right? exactly. You yeah. get through that, and then you know for the next time yeah. everything not to do. Sure. And then you do that, and then you fail a couple times a second time and third time, and then eventually you're just the like, this is my bread and butter. Yeah. I don't care if I mess up a little bit. I know what I'm doing. It, you, the confidence builds. It, it, it's a good feeling. Yeah. It's a good feeling. And then Amen. you look back on it, and you're like, oh, my God. Like, I went through this, and now I'm here. This is awesome. Yeah. Yep. It's cool. That's cool. Funny story, by the way. My daughter, we told her about Thirsty Beaver because it's right by our house. We drive by it. And she, for the longest time, kept calling it Otter Water okay. instead of Thirsty, <laughs> Thirsty Beaver. Beaver. And now I was like, okay, I'm going to pitch this idea to Ed. <laughs> hey, you should make a specialty drink and call it Otter Water because okay. it rhymes and make it a yeah. little, little I thing. can make that deal. Let's, Let's do it. Yeah, so I, I love that deal. Yeah, Otter, Otter Water. Sure. Otter water. You're, you're, you're in the, the bottling Beaver. business too, right? Yeah. If I'm not yeah. mistaken, yeah, you're in a nonprofit. Yeah, yeah so we have a, a nonprofit, all-organic beer company called Wash Ashore Beer Company. It's based out of Martha's Vineyard. Um, my mother and two of her best friends started it about, oh my, like six or seven years ago now. Your mom's um, awesome, by the way. I, thank you, man. I, I had a combo that. with her on Martha's Vineyard. Yeah, she's yeah. She's telling me all yeah, about Michelle's it. Yeah, Michelle's awesome. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's amazing. Obviously, I'm going to hype up my own mother. Yeah. She's amazing. <laughs> uh, love her dearly. But uh, yeah, no, she started this great organization. Uh, it's all nonprofit. You can find the beers at all the uh, Greg's restaurants here in Rhode Island. Uh, and sometimes Thirsty Beaver yeah, every course. now and then, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is awesome. I appreciate that. Yeah, of course. Uh, but yeah, so we give back. All the uh, proceeds each year go back to different local charities uh, between Massachusetts and Rhode Island. Awesome. So, yeah, it's pretty Michelle's cool. Michelle's a big part of the movies, too. And Michelle yeah, has... Huge. The coolest thing about Michelle is movie sets get very intense, as you know. Sure. Yeah. Michelle has this, like, calming presence about her that just kind of radiates. Like, yeah. I've been in situations yeah. where, like, I'm freaked out. I think something horrible is going to happen. We're not going to make our day. Like, I look at Michelle, and she's just kind of, like, like, chill. And, like, it's I'm all like, good. All right, we're not going to die. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Michelle's we'll get through this. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's fine. She's, a, she's a very good vibe to have yeah, around the monitor. Yeah, good balance. She's awesome. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm super excited, guys. I mean, I appreciate you being on today. Of course, appreciate man. your time. I'm, I'm, super, I'm a super fan, so I can't appreciate wait to it, see what you continue to create, what stories you continue you, to man. tell, yeah. where those stories continue to inspire, and, and you're doing some important work here in Rhode Island. And I just, I just can't wait to see what comes next. So make sure well, thank you, man. you check yes, out my, you. my father, Muhammad Ali. How can yeah. people watch that? How can yeah, so it? it's uh, all video on demand services, uh, iTunes, uh, Apple, definitely, uh, cable boxes, everything like that. You can rent it right now. It's available. Uh, and it's actually premiering. I don't know when this is going to premiere, uh, but it is premiering two days, uh, tomorrow and Sunday, at the Apple Cinemas in Warwick Mall. And for Excellent. a special uh, rate, I will come to your house and narrate the film. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. yes, it's a very exclusive <laughs> deal. Yeah, all right. All well, right. The, the guys have photos of all the images from the movie. Yeah, yeah. Like we that. do the live show. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. we are yeah, available cool. for the live show. I love uh, it. I love it. Um, but really, thank you so much. And we would love to maybe come back. I don't want to program your say, show, but maybe when Johnny and Clyde comes out, yeah, right. We can come back again. and yeah. talk about it. I yeah. Maybe we even get into detail. Show here. Yeah, right. And Ed, yeah. we should do yeah. we should do this again next time when we're filming. If we have a couple of the actors here, uh, get them right. on yeah, the podcast them on, yeah. and yeah, interview really cool. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah we would love that. Cool. Yeah, so, like, that. you know, the next bigger film that we do, which would probably be in like the next few months, even. Yeah, so. could be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Let's Let's keep it going, boys. We'll keep you posted. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. This is fun. Thank you so much. This is great work here, man. Thanks for checking out another episode of the Park Podcast. Keep watching. Let's go. Yeah. Tell some stories. Rhode Island strong. Hey-oh.